Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Purveyors of Health. My name is Angelo, and my lovely co-host Mallory Murray in the house. Mallory's put together an awesome show today with special guests, Lance Alexander. Mallory, take it away. Hi, everyone. (laughs) I'm at Lance at random on Instagram, and we've gotten to talking a little bit and I wanted to um, pick his brain and figure out what was going on with his experiences uh, regarding psychedelic mushrooms. He has quite a bit of knowledge and I figured you all might be interested as well. So Lance, if you want to go ahead and um, talk about some of your advocation for the use of psychedelic mushrooms. Absolutely. Um, Hi, everyone. Um, this is my, my first time speaking at one of these, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, before I begin, can everyone hear me well? Is this good volume? Good volume. Okay, um, good. So uh, a little bit of background about me. Um, my name is Lance Alexander. Um, I'm going to start out by saying, so I spent 10 years in the military and obviously with that culture it's a little bit more of a conservative culture so my beginning in psychedelics kind of happened more recently within the last year or so which i think is is really important to realize because i I was on the other side of the spectrum i was more closed-minded and i kind of fell into what i think most people do growing up especially my generation I'm, i'm 28 so um kind of get fed a little bit of misinformation about not only psychedelics but um, you know any anything that's kind of psychoactive or anything that can kind of expand your mind there's kind of a little bit of um, I guess tarnish on it Um, so that that, that's my background Um, so currently I I own doomushrooms.com I don't know if some of you maybe have visited it but essentially after we get up the I'm sorry. Someone was not muted. I muted everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, Lane. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. It's, it's going to happen. Get used to the Zoom. Um, so I, I am the owner of, of DoMushrooms.com. I hope you guys check it out. It's a nothing for profit. It's nothing for money. There's no, no sales or, or no goods on there. But essentially, it's a place where where people can. Um, submit their psychedelic mushroom stories anonymously or not. Some people, um, you know, go to it and they want to include their emails. They want, you know, feedback, which I think is, you know, kind of beautiful. It's, it's pretty cool to, for people to be able to um, put themselves out there like that because there is a little bit of a weight when a weight of stress, I would say, for people who are kind of closeted in psychedelics and, uh, that's kind of a little bit of what I wanted to talk about, you know, today. Um, and so in, in that subject, I think there's a, a hard line between, between recreational use and spiritual use. I feel like there's a, um, a little bit of, of nervousness when people want to come out and say that mushrooms are fun, um, which they, they can obviously be incredibly uh, painful. They can be, um, they can be, you know, stress inducing, but at the same time, they can, they can be very beautiful and fun and as well as spiritual. So um, when, when people, when people spread misinformation, um, I think it's important to realize that anyone who hasn't tried psychedelics themselves or I'm, I'm specifically referring to mushrooms uh, if you have tried psychedelic mushrooms and you're reading about someone who's written about it, you have a hundred percent more experience than that person. So every person in here, if you've taken, you know, psychedelic mushrooms, you are potentially an educator. Um, so I, I hope all of you, you know, take that um, and hopefully represent the the psycho- psychedelic mushroom community proudly because there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of, of stories.
series of, of bad trips, which has felt guilty of, um, for my entire life until pretty much a year ago. So that, that's definitely one thing that I want to bring up. Um, out of the people that are here, how many people have tried psychedelic mushrooms before? I have. So that's about. I have. You want to see yeah. half? I did all the time. Uh, all the time. <laughs> sure. I've yeah. never done mushrooms, but I have done LSD. How would you okay. compare the two? Very different. So, so cra crazily enough, um, I embarked on this journey after one mushroom experience i kind of went full full force pure advocation love my experiences i've had many but i've only stuck with psychedelic mushrooms i, I have not yet bridged the gap between lsd i haven't done ayahuasca i haven't done peyote um, those experiences will be coming i just haven't I haven't finished my journey with mushrooms yet. And before, before I move on to anything else, I want to fulfill that. Um, so I can't speak to LSD. I can't speak to any other psychedelics, but I think, um, I think there obviously are commonalities and similarities with, with stories and experiences, um, which brings me to, a, to another topic of, that I think is really, really profound, which is, how many people can have the same experiences or the same type of experiences while never even reading or hearing about other people's experiences? You know, I've, by reading people's submissions on our website, it's very clear that a lot of people are experiencing the same things, the same either traumas or the same um, profound messages, which I think is something really important um, that people talk about more because the more similarities, the more commonalities that people have with each other, the more kind of bridges the gap of curiosity between people who have never experienced those things. It kind of paints a picture of what, what to expect, even though you can't always plan to what to expect, but it gives a pretty good idea um, for people on the outside looking in. Lance, can you... Um talk a little bit about how the mushrooms kind of came to you first. You mentioned the military. I've heard this a few times from people that um, after being in the military and being on certain medications that they ended up taking mushrooms and that helped them a lot. Um, I don't know if that's your story, but I'm curious. Um, incidentally, so so I, I will say this, I, I am lucky enough that, um, you know, I, I have been deployed, I have been overseas, but I never had a significant trauma that was given to me through, through the military. Um, my, my trauma came elsewhere. Um, I, I did have a, a period of time for about a year, which actually led me down, down the path of, you know, mushrooms. Um, where I went through a depression, a pretty severe depression. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know if the military had something to do with it. I think there's a huge aspect where your identity is taken from you when you are, um, you know, in the military, especially over a long period of time. But um, I, I, I will say that I kind of, I kind of wish. So I'm getting a little bit of bit of feedback from someone's microphone please mute yourself please if you're not speaking thank you it's all good it happens um so what, what kind of led me down this path uh, i don't know where i first started hearing about it I, I think i think when i started really feeling myself going off the deep end or really feeling myself not liking who i was as a person um, not understanding what career path I wanted to go down, not really understanding the trauma that I've experienced in my life. I think, I think I knew that something was wrong, but I didn't know what, and I, I knew a hundred percent that I didn't want to go down the path of medications. I didn't want to go down the path of addictions. So I think my research started online of trying to find 
something that would help me, even though I didn't know exactly what I needed help with. Um, and when it comes to depression, you, you don't honestly, you don't truly know that you are depressed when you're going through your depression, which is kind of one of the worst aspects of it. You find yourself, you know, either hating life or hating yourself, but not understanding why or what the cause is. And I felt myself in, in that area. Um, and I, I, I think it was some documentaries or some sort of, maybe it was on Reddit or something, but I found, I found myself reading people's posts on, on how it helped them. So I, it started with being open-minded, you know, it started with me realizing that everything that I was maybe taught wasn't really information. It was misinformation and misinformation for the purpose to make people not want to take these substances, which is, which is absolutely terrible. Um, but when I, when I did, it was absolute game changer. I, I hope that answers your question, Mallory. I know it kind of went off. <laughs> yes, no, it does. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to uh, re have you respond to some of these questions in the chat. So I'll read them to you. If you could speak a little bit about microdosing portions and the benefits and sure. yeah, we'll start at that one. So microdosing and benefits. Um, so microdosing is one of those, one of those funny things. Um, I've had to experience for those of you who have never, you know, used psychedelic mushrooms uh, and, and you want to go to it in a, uh, you want to start out with a microdose, obviously start on the lower side, um, but it, it truly, and I hate saying this, it truly all depends because there's many different strains, there's many different species. Um, I, I like to generalize it. So for example, the strain golden teachers of psilocybin cubensis, which is one of the most common strains out there. I like to use that as my my guide of reference when it comes to to dried weight for microdosing. Um, so when it comes to golden teachers of psilocybin cubensis, which is if there was a Costco for for psychedelic mushrooms, that would be the Costco, uh, the, the most widely probably available. And then, and then it goes from there. Um, I think Rama Hayes, I think he was holding albino penis envy or it might have been uh, I, I can't really see, but it looked like it. Um, but regardless, that's more of a heavy strain. So when it comes to when it comes to uh, microdosing, anything under and this is subjective to my recommendation. Anything under half of a gram of dried weight to me is a microdose. But it all depends because it's truly hard to identify the potency of a mushroom. Um, because it varies by weight, it varies by species. Um, I knew that there was a second part of the question, Mallory, but I can't think of it. That's okay. Um, so the question, the second part was the portions and benefits, which you have kind of touched on. Um, I'll ask another question. Can people build a tolerance to mushrooms like they can to weed or alcohol? Absolutely. They absolutely can. Um, so when it comes to, to psilocybin, which is the main psychoactive ingredient, you're, you're looking at around a week for, for your tolerance to be back. And, and interestingly enough, there's also cross tolerances with psilocybin and other psychedelics, which is pretty interesting. So if, if you go on a pretty significant mushroom trip on a Monday, and on Wednesday, you choose to do an LSD trip, there is a, le a level of cross tolerances there, which is pretty interesting. However, if you're microdosing, um, I, I, would, I, would, I would recommend a once a week under a, a half a gram, and, and you'll feel a pretty good afterglow after you ingest that microdose. But on the flip side, if you take a pretty significant dosage, uh, and I'm, when I say pretty significant, I'm, I'm saying anything above, you know, two grams, the likelihood of you wanting to have another uh, psychedelic mushroom experience is probably lower because the last thing you want to do after eating a bunch of mushrooms is eat more mushrooms. 
at least from my perspective. Um, because it, obviously those, those uh, <laughs> experiences can be pretty intense. Yeah. Um, I have another question. What about stacking nootropics and other neurodegen neurogenerative fungi like lion's mane? What are the effects of the acidic compounds with endogenes? So right? I, am, I am not afraid to say if I don't know something, and I truly don't know the answer to that question. Fair enough. Um, but I, I absolutely am interested, and I and I can I can find out that very easily. And I do have a list of books that are excellent resources for for um, questions like that that I'll definitely post into the chat. Oh, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Um. You did talk a little bit about uh, improved brain function. Can you kind of expand on that? So absolutely. Um, so I, I don't know the level of research that people have done in this chat. Um, there is there is so much information out there on psychedelic mushrooms. There's incredible studies put out there, which um, are some of them are on the website, but I can copy and paste a lot of that and put them on here. Great research tools, but in in if I can compress it into a truncated response, I would say that um, Michael Pollan has a really good analogy of talking about this, um, and he has a book called How to Change Your Mind, and it's about psychedelics. It's fantastic, but um, essentially patterns that you've built throughout your life. Um, we are repetitive creatures. We fall we fall into patterns. So if we constantly are doing something over and over and picture as a mountain and people, you know, skiing down a mountain, the more times that you take a trail, more times that you take a path, that rivet gets deeper and you find yourself taking that path more often than not. Essentially what psychedelics or psilocybin specifically will do um, is essentially give you a fresh coat of snow to where new pathways to the brain can, can connect, but also there's a, there's a flip side to that. So not only can new pathways connect for you to be open to new ideas, new perspectives, but the connection between repressed memories um, can take place as well. So, so that goes into more of the talk therapy, the PTSD, the you as an individual um, associating trauma with your current state. So anything that you've pushed aside consciously or subconsciously, trauma that you've experienced, um, by taking psychedelic mushrooms, you are reconnecting those repressories in your brain so on a scientific level. So that goes into um, anyone out there looking for We're like losing, yeah. shaman. Can you guys we, hear lost, we lost you for a moment. If you could just roll it back a, a moment. <laughs> no, no problem. What, what was the last thing that, that I that I said? The repressed memories and, and how that starts to come come back to. Absolutely. Um, so so the, 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 the links in your brain um, that psilocybin enables the new pathways, the neural pathways in your brain can actually tap into repressed memories. So when it comes to talk therapy or PTSD or, or people going on spiritual trips, those are the experiences that can be really, I've, I've felt this too. I, I've gone through a psychedelic experience and then come out of it and remember all these things that have not only, you know, bad happened to me, but just memories that I completely forgot of. And it's, it's a kind of a strange feeling when you remember all these things just after, you know, a day or two after your psychedelic experiences. Um, and I highly recommend if anyone in here is, is looking for something like that to help recover from whatever trauma that you've had is to you know, embark on experience with either a, a shaman or a close friend where you can talk about, you know, whatever it is that you're going through after you've 
you know, gone through ingestion. Thank you so much, Lance. That's amazing. I didn't know that about the repressed memories. Uh, that's new to me. Um, has anyone else experienced that? You can go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to say something. I, I've never experimented with mushrooms, but that's how ayahuasca is supposed to work. Um, it's supposed to bring up memories as far back as like your own birth. Um, so it's not so much about, I don't know if that's kind of relating to what um, Lance was saying. I can, I can say something on that too. Like, uh, ayahuasca is like, ayahuasca is like talking directly to God. If you know how to speak his language, you know, but like mushrooms are powerful because mushrooms, um, are the fruit and the actual organism is the mycelium, which is underneath almost everything. And, um, when you take mushrooms, it really gets you deep in, into an emotional state that is like deep within your own subconscious. So you access the mycelium of your soul and your subconscious. And so when you take them, that's, you're able to, it kind of takes all of that truth and puts it right in your face. Yeah. And for some people it's a good trip and some people it's a bad one. But I always say it's, it's a learning trip if you understand why you had that experience. Yeah. I like to I like to call them uh, challenging trips for real. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, mushroom experience, um, and yeah, that's what that's what it is. Yeah, because you're you're always gonna learn a lesson uh, fr from that. You know, it, it it might seem negative at the time, but but when you think about it, it'll 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 really uh, it's, there's really a lesson behind uh, that experience or or journey that you went through. So uh, I think Mar to go off what Marley was saying, um, why some of these psychedelics are so similar in, in experiences is because as you digest the psilocybin and it gets broken down in your body, uh, dimethyltryptamine that's in psilocybin is digesting almost exactly the same way as it is in ayahuasca, which the active main psychoactive ingredient is dimethyltryptamine and very similar to mescaline. They're, they're all digesting very, very similarly. Um, and what I will say about challenging trips, and I love using challenging trips rather than, than a bad trip, is, and I was actually talking about this with my wife earlier, that the, the, the onset of panic or you kind of getting scared on the onset of the effects is, is more of the dissolving of yourself and right. you're getting more right. of a, a sub objective view of what's happening. You're almost like a pilot watching the plane go right. as like an innocent bystander, which is a pretty. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, uh, for me too, um, I have, uh, you know, I, I was in the military also and uh, a lot of that, um, you know, military anxiety, all, all that stuff that we have to deal with on the inside. Um, it, it, it just gets, uh, it, you feel like you're compressed, you know, um, you're, you know, you, you, I, it's not even depression almost. It's just like, we don't even know what it is. You, 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 when you're in, in that environment for so long where you can't really make your own decisions, it's, it's just like, you're so compressed and everything like that. And then what the mushroom did for me was just kind of defrag and, 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 and decompress my brain so I could be uh, myself again, so I can be happy again, so I can um, under, understand um, emotions better, other, other people's emotions better, you know, to, uh, uh, I, I think a lot of the, a lot of the emotions and everything that we go through are, because uh you know we're thinking about ourselves and how it's you know directly affecting ourselves when it's really about how it's not only affecting us but others too a lot of people um don't realize that you know it's it's a, a lot of it's just a one plus one uh equation for them and, and mu the mushroom will teach you along you know through time that it's 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 about everybody you want everybody to feel um, as powerful and as in tune as you do. You don't want to, you don't want to hide, um, 
this knowledge or or covet for yourself or anything like that you 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 want to um you want to share it with everybody you know and i think that's why we're all here too you know so yeah absolutely yes thank you so much david i appreciate you chiming in i really do i know you have so much knowledge on the topic as well so that's much appreciated yeah for sure for sure, yeah, yeah. David, I, w- I would love, it's not very often where I find someone who was in the military willing to share any of their experiences. I would love to talk to you, you know. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I, I went so far as creating my uh, creating my own psilocybin brand. I have a full line of products and everything like that here. Wow. In, uh, so, um, you guys are um, close in proximity as well. I've actually... Yeah told you guys about each other we should link up man (laughs) that sounds awesome absolutely yeah so we should definitely link up um yeah there's definitely uh lots to talk about um i'm kind of pressed for time uh myself right now i just wanted to chime in and let you guys know i'll I'll be here if you guys need anything any knowledge or anything at all just let me know um i'll always be around um i'll drop my i'll drop the insta uh in the comments so uh Everybody has will, will have full um, access to me if you know whatever. So. Thank you, David. Thank you so you're, much. You're very Thank very you. welcome. Thanks, Thanks Mallory, for you, having David. me. Of no course. Problem. No problem. Thank you. Um, I'll drop it in. Wonderful. Yep. Let's see if there's any other questions in the chat. Um. I think we answered all the specific chat questions. Is there anything anyone else wants to share about things that they've experienced with psychedelic mushroom or maybe some concerns they've had and mentions that maybe they could ask Lance about? Uh, yeah, I'll hop in there. How's it going, everybody? Um, oh, man. What's up? What's up? It's Otto here speaking. So, um, yeah, I'm actually a paraplegic, and the first experience that I had with psychedelic mushrooms or psilocybin was in uh, this state in a wheelchair, and so I was nervous at first trying it because of all the stigma and stuff that you hear, but um, my first journey was, uh, it was really, it was really good, really rewarding, and then um, I went on to have like a seven, like a little over a seven gram dose. And that wow. one really blew my mind. And um, there's this there's this guy on YouTube that I found, and he takes like 30 grams, and he talks about other people. Like he's not the only one that does them and stuff. He talks about higher doses and how you actually get out of your body, and like you you enter into like the astral plane. And um, he also was talking about like um, people, like you see people meditating on these rugs and stuff. Well. The sacred geomet- geometrical patterns within the rugs take you to like a new, like a new dimension, and it's like a portal or like a gateway. And um, like, so I totally was feeling those like, like w- on my seven gram journey, um, I was in my room, and um, like I could see clearly, and but I would close my eyes, and it was almost if it as if I could see the room more clear than if my eyes were open and I was like, whoa, like what's going on here? And uh, I just totally felt like I was in my mind space. Like I was just my mind and I was able to traverse like time and space and pretty much almost like go where I wanted to go. And um, yeah, I, I went into uh, like, like the, the trip, the experience was kind of like, like a roller coaster up and down. Like there was some challenging parts but then I would have massive breakthroughs and like, I would just like be breathing and sighing and laughing. And um, I, I, I realized that the, the oneness and everything and um, how we're all like tourist fields, like we're all like our own kind of um, we're in, we're in the collective, but we're, we're like our own like balls of um, not balls, but like points of energy, if you will. And so um yeah, and the and the guy, uh, I'm, his name is a little difficult to recall, so I'll, I'll look it up right now after I'm done speaking, and I'll put it in the chat, and uh, you guys can look it, look it up on YouTube. But he was also talking about like these monks, and um, they like have you seen when they they powder and they make like these uh, sacred geometrical patterns, but they're all like they're in a circle and they're all 
um, right there making like this mala and um, or like the you know the the circular wheels um, I believe they're called malas and um, mandalas mandalas Mandala. mandalas yeah and so that like what they would create it would take them to a place and you can actually go to these places while you're on like these deep trances and you can learn there it's like a school so they would go to these schools and they would get like this really deep like understanding and they would get like these these ideas and like they would learn how to build structures and all types of stuff so they would bring that back with them and that's how they were able to like make a lot of their um make a lot of their temples and all that stuff they would go to these sacred spots in uh, space time and they would bring that knowledge back with them like if almost if they were tapping into the akashic but uh that's pretty much what i had to add wow so Thank you. I, I think what, what i what i love about that is i think if i would have heard this a year and a half ago i would have written this off as something ridiculous but having such similar experiences to this it really changes your perspective. I, one of my very first mushroom experiences was on a relatively lower dose. And I was able to lay back on the beach and well, actually uh, on this patch of grass. And I was looking up at the sky and my wife was with me and we were looking up at the sky and these geometrical patterns of the sacred geometry, whatever you want to call it, mandalas, a portal, you know, it, it was there, it existed, and that was truly one of the most impactful experiences of my life because I felt like I was being gifted a small vision into something else that lied beyond. And it was pretty profound, profound in a way that, that it's hard to describe it's, it's almost nonsensical saying that it, it is real or it isn't real. Um, all that I can say is I saw it, I witnessed it. Um, and not only did I witness it by myself, I was able to describe what I was seeing to my wife and she was saying this, seeing the same things and pointing out different areas. And we were experiencing, you know, the same geometry, kaleidoscope, whatever you want to call it at the same time. It was one of the most incredible, profound experiences. Um, and the same thing happens with, with higher doses when the same, the similarly same geometrical patterns become evident where you can see them, feel them, and, and just really experience them. Um, so yeah, I definitely relate to that. Thank you for, for sharing that story, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. I've had a similar experience. It's funny that you mentioned that, Michael, because I noticed the thing about mushrooms is when you close your eyes, you have this expectation, your human expectation of like, if I close my eyes, everything will change and it'll be mellow. And nope, it just gets more intense, more brilliant, more crazy. And um, it's, it's, truly I think a testament of the idea of like really going within right um Bo had another question are you still here Bo did you want to ask your question yeah um I had a friend tell me one time that uh if you grow your own mushrooms uh then if you start having like a bad time then you can literally like talk to the mushroom and be like hey I made you and then it will like be like oh you got us um and <laughs> And it can kind of like, you know, uh, the challenge that I've had with mushrooms is like, um, I've heard you just got to be like super duper clean and it's got to be a completely sterile environment. Um, I guess my question to you is like, what, to what degree does it have to be super sterile and what are some tips that you have for like, for producing it yourself? Okay. So I will say, and this is my own personal opinion. I, I don't know how comfortable I would feel foraging wild um psych psychoactive mushrooms but that's that's only me um i like the idea of cultivating yourself of putting in the time growing them and then having those you know be the source of your experiences but that that's only me i don't think that there's anything wrong with going out and identifying and and taking taking your own um when you do go down the route of cultivation, I will say it is challenging 
but there's so many resources out there that can assist you with cultivation. Reddit is a huge um, resource for it. And if you are truly willing, wanting to go down that, the best resource for you guys to start would be going to YouTube and typing in North Spore Monotech. Uh, sorry, North Store Monotub. And that is the absolute greatest resource that I have found for people wanting to cultivate. Thank you, man. Thanks, my friend. Of course. And I think I saw someone say one more question, but I don't know. I have a question. <laughs> it's Michael. Hi, how are you doing? It's Michael. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm good. How are you? Doing fantastic. I, I got on a little late, so I'm not sure if this was covered or not. Uh, do you have suggestions uh, with respect to microdosing on dosages and frequency? I, it, I think it's truly situation dictates, uh, especially, you know, how often you use other things. Um, I would suggest that if you are planning to microdose, well, that's it, dude. But she pushed up on it too. So if we put more Get weight up. on it, Aaron, Get up, Aaron. Oh. microphone's on. <laughs> I'll just, I'll push, I'll push through it. Um, <laughs> So I, I would suggest any, anything under 0 0.5 grams, depending on the strain um, of dried, I'm talking about uh, dry weight. So under 0 0.5 grams, um, try it on a, you know, once a week, see how you feel, because it's not necessarily the day itself that you take psychedelic mushrooms or psilocybin mushrooms. It's gonna be the afterglow or the, the days to follow. So if you take it on a Monday, expect to feel anything that you w would like to feel on that microdose, you know, by until Friday. Um, however, on I found to be more beneficial is, I don't want to say one large trip, but a heavier dose, um, especially when it comes to things like being introspective, being spiritual, or making some sort of breakthrough. I find that one larger experience over a course of months um, definitely does the trick for me. Um, but it, it truly, truly depends. It depends on who you are. Um, if, if you are to ingest, I would recommend making some sort of ginger tea. Um, if uh, they're water soluble, so you can ground them up, add them to some tea. And I say tea because by adding boiling water with your tea, it's not affecting your psilocybin content but it is killing any unwanted bacteria. So that would definitely help if you're concerned anything about mold or some sort of bacteria that you weren't wanting to, di to digest. So um, definitely one of the ways that I usually ingest would be making ginger tea and, and mixing it in and, and getting it in like that um, to prevent any sort of unwanted bacteria. Cool. Thank you, Lance. Um, I have a question. I noticed personally the difference between when I took uh, psychedelic mushrooms before I had a more kind of cleaner vessel versus the trip that I had when I had a more pure vessel. Do you do anything dietary um, differently now that you have more experience? Have you noticed a difference in, in how you prepare? Do you prepare for them with your um, food consumption? So I think one of the longest trips I've ever had was on a full stomach. Um, and I, this is just from my personal experience. Um, I, th I think I ate a lot that day and, and I had a night trip and I felt the effects last for a very long time, even though I ingested them by using um, the same method, ginger tea, but my, my trip was lasting a lot longer. I, I do feel that if you do do it on an, on an empty stomach and you ground them up, be prepared for a little bit of a more intense come up or a more uh, intense onset. 
because if you have nothing in your stomach and nothing to slow down the onset of effects, it's going to hit you hard, very hard. And, and you'll feel it, especially with a higher dose. Um, but you know, that that's okay. But when it goes, when you asked about, um, preparing, you know, your vessel, I would say the big three set setting and dosage, um, so make sure your mindset is clear and there's nothing wrong with vocalizing, you know, your intent or vocalizing exactly what you want to get through, you know, before that experience, you're, you're actively persuading your trip beforehand. Um, and then obviously your setting, make sure you know exactly where you're going to be a place that's comfortable and then a predetermined dosage. You know, if, if you've done 1.5 grams or two grams and you're ready for something more, um, there's a pretty big significant difference between one gram and 1.5 and then 1.5 to two and then two, two and on, uh, there's a pretty significant difference. So just because you've done two grams, that doesn't mean you're ready for four. Um, I, I would highly recommend baby steps. There's no rush for you to, you know, ingest seven grams or do a, a hero dose because those can get pretty intense pretty quick. Yeah. One rule of thumb I have heard that I implement is you can always add, you can never take away. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Does anyone else have anything to share on any level? Um, I'll jump in. Yay. I'll jump in. I, I, uh, I fasted before the last time I took, well, one of the last times, I can't remember the exact last time it's been a few, but like, uh, one of the last times that I did them, did some mushrooms, I think they were ovoids, psilocybin that I forged myself. Um, I was fasted at that point that day. I didn't have anything to eat until the point. And then I ate them with a big hunk of lion's mane with about, I don't know, I want to say three grams, four grams. And, uh, and then I drank, um, kombucha, like this honey kombucha. So I've heard that acid, acidic foods like kombucha kick it in faster, but I don't know if that was just because I was fasted also. I was like within 10 minutes tripping my balls off. I mean, <laughs> it was like, and it, and it lasted a long time. Like I was rocking it all night, man. And one last point, but when I, when I, um, when I, the next day, usually I found that I feel like a little drain, like maybe the mineral depletion in the body. So what I've done uh, is I like to take um, salts, you know, um, like bladder rack or Irish sea moss and stuff like that afterwards and just drink a lot, a lot of water because I feel like my muscles take a hit pretty hard when I do, when I take uh, mushrooms. Yeah. Um, so what I will say about the, acidity um so i don't know if anyone here has heard of lemon tech or or orange juice tech or anything like that but essentially the idea behind um, adding high acid foods specifically lemon juice fresh lemon juice um, it'll break down so for example for those of you who, who don't know uh mushrooms putting them in a, in a glass jar a glass um, cup adding lemon juice and letting them sit. Uh, the idea behind quickly the mushrooms from psilocybin to psilocin so essentially as soon as that hits the onset of effects it, it essentially skips the gap um of having your body digested. It's already digested. And, and you're like Angelo said, you're going to start tripping balls quickly. We made that mistake. The very first time that we did, we, we thought we were going to. Frozen. Can't hear him. You know, Lost you, buddy. Eat the shrimp. Lance. Lance, you're freezing I up, brother. Somebody get Lance a jacket because this guy's frozen. You guys get me? Coming back. 
You can't hear us, Lance? The signal's going to space, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can hear the credit, you know. He's moving while the signal's going to space. <laughs> Pretty advanced technology, guys. <laughs> well. Can you guys, uh, can you guys hear me now? Now we can. You said we made that mistake the first time and then it was just. Okay, yeah, we made the mistake first time. We let them sit in lemon juice for about 20 minutes and I cut our 45 minute uh, journey to the beach in half. So essentially we were tripping pretty hard before we were even halfway there. So it was a pretty, it was a smack to the face of, oh my God, we are on the sidewalk and there are cars everywhere and we are tripping. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you made it safely. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, hey Lance. My, my guardians that I uh, sit with for its mushroom ceremony pretty much every month, this month it'll be twice. Um, I just sat with them Saturday. They have an orange tree in their backyard and they bless it with their orange juice and they do add some squeezes of, of lemon. So, I mean, you're right on um, it coming through quicker so I guess the timing, you just got to know where you're going to be at the time. But yeah, we'll we'll start tripping bottles in like 20, 30 minutes or so. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Well, what I find to be super fun is if you're going to the supermarket and you're trying to find some lemons, you know, it's, pre it's pretty cool to like pick and choose which ones you're going to use. And then, you know, ceremony, having a little aspect of ceremony in there is, is also pretty cool. It sets the vibe into like, really good positive energy before before you really start going so i find that to be super fun absolutely for for my um guardians in particular they take you on a journey that i i don't feel well, i mean i've never experienced mushrooms without them but um the journeys i go on with these with this crowd is just amazing due to the music they provide and all of the everything that's very cool uh let's can i ask um is there um, I think you're in San Diego. Is that correct? I am. Oh, okay. Is there a place where um, I haven't even asked my guardians if I could buy some off of them because they're not like, I don't know if you call them dealers, <laughs> but is there a place where I could get my hands on them? Because I want to I wanna go on a journey at home. I don't want to have to go all the time up to LA, which is well worth the drive, but you know, uh, every once in a while I want to do that home. I just don't have a connection. Yeah. Or, um, so, Maybe we can have a little conversation offline or something. Yeah, sure. And actually, yeah, I think about it, and I probably do have a connection. I just haven't really. But we're talking about it now, so I wanted to bring it up. Okay, for sure. I we'll can connect. give you guys each other's information. I have Lance's phone number, and I have Victoria's. I can connect you guys. Amazing. That'd be great. I'm going to go off camera again because i got to go in another store. <laughs> okay. I'll be listening. So Lance, with your experience, what advice would you give on like the mindset going into a trip? So it, it, that's a pretty difficult question. I would say there's always going to be a level of nervousness before your first. Obviously, there's going to be a, a low, level of nervousness because you've been fed some sort of you know misinformation your whole life. But I would say um, you know the number one rule is is don't panic. Uh, if you're feeling uncomfortable, that's the point. You know, you're taking mushrooms. You're going to feel uncomfortable. There's going to be a little bit of loss of identity um, and, you know, embrace that. Um, and with mindset, you know, really think about exactly what your intentions are going to be. You know, re really think about what you, you want to get out of it. Um, because I'm telling, I'm telling you, if, if you, and I've fallen guilty of this before, if, if you go into a trip just looking to get messed up or you're not really taking it seriously or you're just saying, you know, whatever, I'm just going to eat some mushrooms. It'll, it'll come back around and you'll feel it. Um, <laughs> and, and it can be quite challenging. Um, so I would say with your mindset, you know, prepare yourself to feel uncomfortable and prepare yourself for a psychedelic journey. You know, if things are feeling weird, that's the point. Thank you, man. That was a uh, really good, really good input. <laughs> You're welcome.
Yeah, I would say with all things, try to keep it as sacred as possible and, and use intention. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I, I felt guilty of it. Um, I can't remember how long ago it was, but at that point, I, we'd, I've done mushrooms plenty of times and I thought I was super comfortable and I wasn't really worried about it. So uh, on an empty stomach, we put 4.2 grams and I, we had a, a pretty, pretty painful or yeah, pretty painful six hours where I, I learned a lot of things. I don't regret it at all. Um, I just wish I was far better prepared. And I wish I respected the mushroom before going through that experience. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, on Netflix, I think Sting says it the best. If you're if you're trying to get fucked up on mushrooms, they're gonna fuck you up. Yes, <laughs> that's true. So if, if there's any um, last words, maybe you. Can uh share with us lance any bits of advice or um resources that you want to share with the group i know you said you were going to share some things in the chat but you're driving so i have a question here um Just yeah one more question in for lance someone's oh we have another right question now. someone has a question for you lester unmute yourself jump on in there um are oh, you unmuted can you, can you guys hear me yeah yeah. Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, what's up, Lance? Hey. So, um, I did it. I did a shroom ceremonially a few years ago with um. I don't know if you know uh, uh Travis from East Forest. Anybody know? I don't. Mm -hmm. He's like he did a he did a uh he did a compilation with uh Ram Das before he passed away. He he's pretty out there. Like, I do. Know? Yeah, I do. Yeah, he he's awesome. awesome. So I did it with him, and it was really powerful. Then um recently, a friend of mine gave me. Gave me these. Wow, that's that's very beautiful. That's awesome. You got to do it with him. That's very beautiful. Yeah, no, it was awesome with him. That's yeah. <laughs> so uh, recently, a friend of mine. I don't know if anybody's familiar with these. It's um, can you see? It took yeah. It's a capsule and it's got the psilocybin in it. So I don't. Do you have any recommendations on this? Like I basically, I put it in the water, and it dissolved. And I took it recently, I took a little bit, but I wasn't prepared. And then I started like, I wanted like, like I wanted Oreo cookies. And I was like, I, I, I wasn't like, <laughs> so I messed everything up because I wound up eating cookies. So I, I, it just messed everything up. And I usually give, do it res, with respect. You know, like I've, I've done ayahuasca, San Pedro, Wachuma and all that. But um, yeah, I mean, I was tripping my balls with these things. And I was like, <laughs> so do you have any re recommendations? <laughs> Um, so I, I don't know what that is. And, uh, yeah, it's it just seems basically to be, I don't know if it's some, sort of, it's just, is that, is that ground up in there? Yeah, it's actually, I don't know if it's ground up. It's like the actual suicide and it's like melted in there. Like it's like, it looks like resin. Or yeah. Something like what, that. what I would recommend is go about your day. How about you do everything, wake up, do whatever you do. And then when it comes up to about that time, of course, uh, maybe not eat not eat meat that day, but uh, and then fast for six hours, only water, and then just do it only water, uh, no tea, or do it with tea. It doesn't matter. But it's uh, all do it. Try the water. lemon. Try the lemon if you want. The thing about lemon is lemon raises your hydrochloric acid levels in your stomach. So that's the one thing about the whole lemon tech is that it's gonna improve digest digestion and it's going to hit harder quicker but but uh i would say go about your regular day fast for six hours and then and then c consume it and then just throw your intentions and ask what it is honestly and then you'll get your full full what you need out of it I would say consider meditating and maybe reflecting on what you want to get out of the trip and what you want to focus on um, beforehand. Okay. Oh, yeah, that, of course, too. Yeah. And, you know, I, I would say it's pretty difficult to, to extract psilocybin unless it's made synthetically. So I'm just really curious on exactly, you know, 
how you were able to get that or whoever your source was to get that. It's pretty incredible if they were able to, you know, somehow get synthetic psilocybin. Um, but, you know, on the flip side, if you're getting synthetic psilocybin, that takes the nature, that takes the mushroom out of the experience. And it's just the synthetic compound. So keep that in mind, too. Oh, um, when you're wow. taking okay. a synthetic compound r rather than something yeah. grown naturally. Yeah, what you got right there is the pure chemical. It's wow. So then you don't think this is this is like legit then? Yeah. <laughs> I've, it's, I've no, 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 no. Like it's, it's psilocybin, and then once it, and then it, it just converts into psilocin, and when it when it gets into your uh, your gut or whatever. Uh, but thing is, though, uh, it it is what it is, and and uh, oh, if you want, you could even uh, go right online. You can go get a, a re, re reurgent test kit. You can go to uh, there's, you can just get a test kit if you like, and um, you can always test it. Either way, I've I know I've seen that right there. I've yeah. Um, Yep, yep, yep. That's a. Uh, it's, yep. it's just some tar. Form. It's just some. Yep. It's just some tar. I've seen crystalline. I've also seen that tar stuff before. But yeah, okay. just um, I would say though, go about your regular day. Do your meditation. Do everything. Six hours though. Don't consume nothing, and then then put it in your body, and then you'll really ground, really ground with it, and just you'll just you'll, you'll just know what to do next time when it comes into your path. Of course. Okay. And then give it to other people, whatnot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I would love to hear about the experience too. I would love to okay. hear about it. Okay. I will. I'll keep. I'll keep you guys in mind. I'll definitely let you know. Let's all have a Zoom trip together. Yeah. Oh my god. That, that sounds wild. fantastic. I'll we'll be on Zoom. I didn't want anything to do with my phone. I was like, no. Dude, we'd all be looking at the screen like the electric box. Don't do it. I hide my phone when I do that, man. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, hey. Mallory, I, I got I got nothing else for the group. Uh, I will say this is so much fun. This was great. Um, I hope to hear all of your guys' experiences and uh, please reach out through the Instagram, through the website, submit your story. Um, I'd love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much, Thank Lance, you. for your time and energy and just sharing all of your knowledge with us. It's so appreciated. Um, and uh, I look forward to speaking with you next time. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, I'd like to give my quick little first, the first time my mushroom trip was. Please. So I was, I was 14 years old. Uh, this was in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Tillamook Coast. Uh, at my skate park, they would grow right at my skate park. Uh, uh, I don't know who the heck did it. I don't know who, what. Uh, some landscaping, scam, landscaping company came in one year. And they just laid bark dust everywhere. And I think so I think somebody came along and inoculated all the bark dust because one year, bam, next thing. One year, bam, all over where that bark dust, every the McDonald's, the Fred Myers, <laughs> the skate park, everywhere al along the Pacific, literally everywhere, just every town in, in Tillamook. I mean, every town in the the northwest right there just it, all the coast everywhere just literally any field uh, farm didn't matter that you pfft, right in your backyard every october you could uh you could go and um pick yeah either way so i was 14 is everybody in the town would always call it frying and i was always like thinking to myself well one i one i grew up with i this is i could go on I don't want to go on forever, but thing was, though, everybody would call it frying, and I was just like, okay, one of one, I was like, all of you are so dumb, and then everybody would be like, don't look in the mirror, and I'd be like, why, why not, and then, and then, so once it got down to the day, I split a fat bag with a bunch, with two friends, ended up walking along and everything, I got to this school and everything, and I was looking in the, this glass mirror, 
and I was just straight looking right into myself. I just saw everything I needed to see. And then uh, I just, I just left my friends, walked back home. And I was just like, wow. I was like, everybody called this frying and everything. I really realized, I just truly realized every, everything right then and there. Walked back home, knocked on my door. My mom answered, told my mom. I was like, mom, I was like, I am so thankful for you. I love you. You are my best friend. She cried right then and there out of nowhere. And then I just gave her the biggest, biggest hug. And then just, and then we watched Scooby-Doo after that with my little brother on the couch and had a beautiful day. <laughs> right on, man. I love that. Thanks, Hayes. <laughs> Rama Hayes. Thanks, bro. Um, All right. Are, are, are we going to wrap it up now? Five o'clock. Mm -hmm. We're a little over the hour. You guys, mm -hmm. thank you so much to Lance for coming on. It's an honor to meet you, man. It's an honor to hear your wisdom for sharing that with all of us. Everyone that's been here participating and everyone that's here just bearing witness, holding space. Thank you all so much. This has been a great, another great meetup. We're doing these every week. Thanks, Mallory, for helping put these together amazing hostess with the mostest and um yeah every thursday at five o'clock i'm uh, sorry four o'clock pacific time seven o'clock eastern we're doing this and um i think today we're gonna we are going to incorporate some of the uh purium uh uh Thursday magic that's no longer with Ron Seema with the HJL. So if you guys, any of you out there are interested in learning more about the uh, Purium organic nutrient dense, enzymatically rich superfood nutrition, uh, and even the business side of what we do in Purium, which our mission is to uh, end human suffering, raise human consciousness, at six o'clock, the same login right here. If you guys are interested to come back on, we're going to be having a really brief rundown of the five products with Purium and the whole, and the ultimate lifestyle transformation and answer any questions you guys have. So again, thank you all so much. Thank you, Mallory. Uh, and thank, thank you, you, Lance. Thank you, Rama. Thank you, everybody. I it was really a pleasure. Each and every one of you guys. Stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, thank so you much. much. Thank, you, thank you. That was awesome. That Thanks, was very guys. Cool Thanks, Mallory. Thanks, Angelo. Everyone. Thanks, Bo. Um, Thanks, Otto. Thank you. Melissa, everybody, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Everybody have a blessed night.